Hey everyone, welcome back to Beginner's Guide in Data Science, ML, and AI. So in this sequence of videos, we're talking about a couple of tools for you guys to use to put together your first academic paper in a publishable ready format. So we're talking about latex, specifically we're on this platform called overleaf.com. So in this episode, we're gonna dive into pictures. So pictures are figures. These figures are objects created in the latex, just like what we have here, begin equation, and then an equation. Just like that, we can also do the same thing using figures. So for example, here I have a CoLab notebook. I'm doing some principal component analysis, right? I have a plot here, scatter plot. We have two classes, right? We're color coding these dots, blue color versus red color. I do my principal component. I break the data down to two components, right? The x-axis, that's the principal component number one. Y-axis, that's the principal component number two. So let's say I'm a good spot. Let's say I want to get this picture in my paper. All I gotta do is right click, say save image, and then I can give a name. Let's say pick one. Once I pick one is in there, I can open this folder. Now all I gotta do is upload that into this directory in my Overleaf website. So in this project on the left hand side, you see this directory. Typically what I would like to do is to create a folder just like that. And I'm gonna call it fix. In this fix folder, I click on the three dots on the right hand side of this folder. And then I say upload. And this is where I can drag and drop that picture that I just saved into the Overleaf project directory. Of course, you can drop from external URL from another project. You can do whatever you want. I find drag and drop easier in here. So let's demonstrate how that works. I drag this pick one object just like that. And you can see I have a pick one.png. Perfect. So now all I gotta do is create that figure object in the latex and I'm done. So I say begin figure and it will give me this template. So let's take a look what's going on. First line, line 109, we say centering. Centering basically means to align the picture in the center of the paper. And then the next line, line 110, we have include graphics. And here we see a couple of things. We see the width, and then there's another curly bracket after this bracket that says a hyperlink fix slash pick one. This is to infer or to call the picture object that I just uploaded here. Of course, if you have other pictures in here, you can say fix slash whatever other name that you want to do. But since here I have just one picture, then that's going to be the picture that I refer to. After that, you can then go to caption. Typically, the format that I use for caption is the following. I have a title and then I have a description. The title, I typically pull face it. You can use a keyboard control B or command B to turn this into a full face. Once you press on that, you see that here, there's a syntax that says slash text BF. That means bold face text. So this title, once it's rendered, it will be bold-faced letters. Of course, we also have a label object, like what we discussed before. In equations, there are labels. You can do the same thing in figures as well. So we're gonna keep a name, we're gonna say PCA. So now let's render, and then let's see what this look like. So boom, there you go. You can see that this picture object is now loaded into your PDF document. You can, of course, control the width, say 0.9. That means I am creating this picture object with 90% of the line width. So obviously it's bigger. Or you can do smaller, say 0.2, render again. It'll be smaller, just like that. So with that being said, you can then design your title. So the way I design a title is I say PCA, and then I give a description. 
uh, description can be this is a plot of PCA analysis. And then you can describe the picture a little bit, right? You can say the color represents classes. The XY axis represent the principal components. You render again, it will give you a better description. Now, of course, depending on what journal you go for, some journal might ask you to put this caption on top of the figure. Totally, that's possible, right? All you got to do right there is triple click this line, line 111, and then you can use keyboard Alt up and down, move it up and down. So I'm going to move it up. I'm going to render again. You will see that this caption of figure one now is on top of the picture. Last thing I want to show you to wrap up this video is to use a reference. So for example, somewhere down here, maybe you have a paragraph. Maybe you say, here's a new paragraph. We did a principal component analysis, and here's the results. And then before you finish up the period, maybe you cite the picture. Say, presented in fig, and then you say use the same method, ref. This will allow you to make a reference of the other objects defined in this latex document. In this particular case, I want the figure object. So I'm going to say FIG, and then boom, there we go. We can call the PCA because PCA is the syntax I used for the label that goes into that figure object. So once that's there, I can then render my LaTeX again. Here's a new paragraph. We did a principal component analysis. Here's the results presented in fig one. And if you have other pictures, not to worry, you can include the fig object before or after this number will change automatically. You do not have to hard code figure one, two, three, four, all by yourself. So with that being said, thank you for watching. Subscribe and like.